Many companies maintain two sets of records, one for external reporting and one for internal reporting. Often, these companies will use LIFO for tax and external reporting, but another method for internal reporting. For example, Big Ten Company might use LIFO when issuing its financial statements or computing its tax liability, but maintain a FIFO, average cost or standard cost system, when generating internal reports. There are several reasons companies use LIFO for external reporting, but another cost flow assumption for internal reporting. First, companies often base their pricing decisions on a FIFO, average or standard cost assumption, rather than a LIFO basis. Second, record keeping on some other basis is easier because the LIFO assumption usually does not approximate the physical flow of the product. That is, usually the last materials put in inventory is usually not the first inventory out. A company may be motivated to use LIFO for external reporting because using LIFO often results in a lower tax bill and better matching of revenues and expenses. The difference between the inventory method used for internal reporting purposes and LIFO is referred to as the allowance to reduce inventory to LIFO or the LIFO reserve. Suppose the cost of calculators using FIFO for internal purposes was determined to be $1,200. The same company uses LIFO for determining its taxable income and computes the cost of these same calculators to be $1,000. The difference between the internal $1,200 cost and the external $1,000 cost is a $200 LIFO reserve. The change in the allowance balance from one period to the next is called the LIFO effect. The LIFO effect is the adjustment that must be made to the accounting records in a given year. We just computed the LIFO reserve on the previous screen to be $200. If we compute the LIFO reserve the next year to be only $100, the LIFO effect would be the difference between the two years, or $100. To fully understand the LIFO effect, let's look at the following example. Assume Moosehead Company uses the FIFO cost flow method for internal reporting purposes and LIFO for external purposes. At January 1st, the beginning of the year, the LIFO reserve was $60,000. At the end of the year, FIFO costing results in ending inventory of $250,000, while LIFO costing results in ending inventory of $150,000. Therefore, the LIFO reserve should be $100,000 at year end. Because the LIFO reserve is currently only $60,000, we need to credit the account for $40,000. The LIFO effect is therefore $40,000. The journal entry would appear as follows. The LIFO reserve would be deducted from inventory to ensure that the inventory is stated on a LIFO basis at year end. Earlier, we discussed the various methods of cost flow assumptions, including specific identification, average cost, FIFO, and LIFO. Our discussion on LIFO up to this point has emphasized a specific goods approach. In practice, this approach is often unrealistic. After completing this section, you should be able to explain the effect of LIFO liquidations. The first reason that specific identification LIFO is unrealistic is that when a company has many different inventory items, the cost of keeping track of each inventory item is expensive. Imagine the cost of trying to account for every type of product in a convenience store. It is often not practical. The second reason that specific identification LIFO is unrealistic is that erosion of the LIFO inventory can easily occur, often resulting in a distortion of net income and substantial tax payments. This situation is known as a LIFO liquidation. To best understand LIFO liquidation, let's work through an example. 
Assume that Labatt Company has 30,000 tons of steel in its inventory on December 31st, 2002, costed on a specific goods LIFO approach. This 30,000 tons of inventory is not made up only of inventory purchased in 2007, but rather is comprised of steel purchased over the past four years. The amounts purchased since 2004 and their respective costs are shown below. The ending inventory for Labatt Company includes costs from past periods. These costs are called layers. The layers for Labatt Company are shown below. The most recent layer, the 2007 layer, is computed by multiplying the amount of steel purchased in 2007 by the unit cost of that steel. For example, in 2007, Labatt purchased 5,000 tons at $10 per ton, resulting in a layer of $50,000 for 2007. The remaining layers are computed in a similar fashion. As can be seen from the unit cost information, the cost of steel has increased over the four-year period. For whatever reason, Labatt Company was forced to sell much of its inventory. This may have been the result of an unexpected increase in sales or due to worldwide metal shortages. In either case, because Labatt had to sell much of its inventory, it experienced a LIFO liquidation. After the liquidation of inventory, at the end of 2002, only 6,000 tons of steel remained. Because Labatt Company is using LIFO, the last steel purchased is the first steel out the door when there is a sale. So the most recent layer, the 2002 layer, is liquidated first, followed by the 2001 layer, and so on. Knowing that we started with 30,000 tons of steel at the end of 2002, and had only 6,000 tons remaining on December 31st, 2003, we must have sold 24,000 tons of steel. The 2002 layer is completely eroded because only 5,000 tons were purchased in 2002, leaving 19,000 tons to account for. The 2001 and 2000 layers are also completely eroded. Because the amounts purchased in 2001 and 2000 total only 17,000 tons, 2,000 tons need to be subtracted from the next layer. As a result, the 1999 layer shrinks from 8,000 tons to 6,000 tons. The result of liquidating these layers is that lower costs from preceding periods are matched against sales revenues reported in current dollars. This situation leads to a distortion in net income and a substantial tax bill in the current period. For example, Labatt Company had sales in 2002 that were recorded in 2002 sales dollars. However, the cost of these sales was composed of some current costs and some old costs. As a result of matching current revenues with historic costs, Labatt will have a higher net income and probably a higher tax bill. LIFO to alleviate this LIFO liquidation problem and to simplify accounting for inventory, goods can be combined into pools. A pool is defined as a group of items of a similar nature. Instead of only identical units, as is used with specific identification LIFO, a number of similar units or products are combined and accounted for together. This method is referred to as the specific goods pooled LIFO approach. Under this approach, LIFO liquidations are less likely to happen because the reduction of one quantity in the pool may be offset by an increase in another. To see how pooling works, let's look at the following example. Suppose the quantity of flat screen monitors is currently at 100 units made up of monitors from the past three years. Because of the shortage of a key part, the inventory level drops to 20. With no pooling, inflationary profits and a high tax bill may result because current sales are matched with historic lower costs. However, 
By pooling all the different kinds of monitors together, the situation of inflationary profits and the high tax bill may be avoided. Because there is more than one item in the pool, the decrease in flat screen monitors may be offset by an increase in regular monitors. For example, when the flat screens decrease from 100 to 20 units, the regular monitors may increase from 200 to 275 units. Current revenues will be matched with more current costs and inflationary profits and a high tax bill are avoided. The specific goods pooled LIFO approach eliminates some of the disadvantages of the traditional specific goods accounting for LIFO inventories. This pooled approach, using quantities as its measurement basis, however, creates other problems. When we say the phrase quantities at its measurement basis, we mean this approach is based on using tons of steel or liters of gasoline, for example, rather than the cost of the steel or gasoline. The first problem with using the specific goods pooled LIFO approach is that most companies are continually changing the mix of their products, materials, and production methods. For example, a business formerly involved in regular computer monitor sales may now only be involved in the manufacturing of large screen monitors. Such changes mean that pools must be continually redefined. This can be time consuming and costly. Even when changing pools is practical, a second problem with the specific goods pooled LIFO approach exists. A LIFO liquidation, or erosion of the layers, often results, and much of the benefit of the LIFO costing is lost. Erosion of the layers results because a specific item in the pool may be replaced by another item, either temporarily or permanently. However, the new item may not be similar enough to be treated as part of the old pool. Therefore, any inflationary profit deferred on the old goods may have to be recognized as the old goods are replaced. For example, let's look at Fren Company. For competitive reasons, Fren is forced to discontinue sales of traditional computer monitors, one of its many monitor products. Also, Fren now sells some other computer products, including printers. Because the printers are not similar enough to be treated as part of the monitor pool, a LIFO liquidation occurs. Current revenues are matched against historic costs of the monitors as they are sold, and the company will experience inflationary profits resulting in a large tax bill.